According to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, Erlang is the number one programming language salary-wise. Erlang is like a friend who earns more than every one of us, but still always tries to convince us that he is the brokest person we ever met, and sometimes we feel like we have to start a fundraiser for him. Going back to Erlang, 57% of developers admire this language as more than C, C++, PHP, and Java-like popular languages. But remember, admiring a language is different than using it. It's like I am admiring the LGBTQF group of Poland, but I don't live in Poland. Everyone desires to use C or Python or Rust, but they will admire the language that they don't use. This admiration is good, but why do Erlang programmers earn so much money? More money means big companies, and big companies mean money. money, money. 15 years ago, someone answered the question, where is Erlang used? And in that answer, the person has mentioned Amazon, Yahoo, Facebook, WhatsApp, Motorola, and more. Now, if you have this many big names in your portfolio, obviously you have the upper hands. And most of these companies still have a big portion of Erlang code in products. So these big companies will pay big amounts to maintain the code. And the second reason for high salaries is because of high demand and low supply. And low supply is because no college is educating in Erlang. For example, one of the top universities, the University of Chicago, does not offer courses related to Erlang whereas it offers courses for other languages like Python for data science and advanced C++. But they are not wrong. Professors know that there are very few numbers of jobs available. Yes, there are companies like T-Mobile or BT Mobile that require Erlang. Most of the companies that still use Erlang are communication related and require high availability time. That's where eJabberD comes into play which is an open source extensible messaging and presence protocol server built using Erlang OTP. For those of you who don't know, Erlang OTP is an environment in which OTP stands for Open Telecom Platform. This name suggests something related to telecom, but no, this OTP is a set of libraries or a core framework for Erlang that includes components that support projects from start to end. And talking about libraries, not a big collection, only a few libraries, but these few are bombs. Have you ever tried to talk dirty in the chats of League of Legends? If yes, then you have used connection building using Erlang and its libraries. Not only League of Legends, but also the world's largest chat app, WhatsApp, uses Erlang in its backend. WhatsApp keeps its exact internal library usage secret, but I am pretty sure they use OTP and eJabbered. I have read somewhere, Erlang is like an exotic, beautiful woman with no dressing sense. And when I look at these libraries and Erlang performance, I feel that. Because despite having this inner beauty, Erlang has one of the ugliest cloths, its syntax. Still not comparable to Malbolge. You have to take a bath every time you code with Malbolge. Coming back to Erlang, it has a C-like storage for handling input-output with efficiency. So Erlang has adopted one good feature from all good languages. That's because Erlang was, was originally designed for telecom companies, and those companies need 24-7 uptime. Now, it's not possible to create a program that never fails. There will be failure, and Erlang uses the let it crash philosophy, in which faulty processes are restarted automatically with the help of a supervisor. If we look at the example of Discord, which uses Elixir, Erlang's modern cousin, both Erlang and Elixir use the Beam virtual machine to execute their code. The important thing is that Beam is 20x lighter than OS threads. Erlang is the programming language that proves you don't need to be popular to be successful. You can be unsuccessful and unknown at the same time. You just have to be an introvert. So on that note, goodbye and see you in the next one.